How to make a decent model road. Hi, welcome back to some Blazing Model World. This time we're looking at how to turn this into this. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. It's free to do so. And if you hit the bell icon as well, you'll get an alert every time a new program is released. This costs you nothing, but it does help me grow my channel. OK, let's get on. Just like many other aspects of modelling, creating a decent model road for your diorama requires a little bit of thought. Now I know that you can buy printed model road for any scale of any diorama but I've got a couple of problems with those products. Firstly they're completely uniform and if you are going to go down that route you need to do something to create some individual look to the road that you're creating. The second problem is that largely model roads on dioramas are flat and they don't have any contouring at all to them. And lastly, if you're going to introduce a model road to your diorama, have somewhere for it to go. Quite often I see on model railways roads that just run up to a cliff face and then go nowhere. So what we've got here is the start of a model road. This one happens to be polystyrene, it's what I had laying about. But you can uh, use some uh, Celotex or any other form to create the uh, model road itself, the, uh, the base structure for it. And now we're going to show you how to apply some detail. So because I'm using polystyrene and if you're using a, a sort of absorbent uh, product to create the base of your road, it's a good idea to uh, seal it off and I use Mod Podge for that. So the surface of this road has had some Mod Podge applied to it, that's dried and we're ready to go. And uh, this road has got some uh, contour applied to it. You can see it goes uh, in an upward elevation. And that's because I'm going to show you a little trick uh, later on in the process. But uh, Here we go. And I would say right away that this is non-scale specific. So it doesn't matter what scale you're working in. The principles can all be applied. So here we are. Next step. I've applied a, a thin layer of PVA onto the surface and then use some uh, ballast actually, this is uh, N-gauge ballast. Uh, I like it because it, it just provides a real texture to a road rather than the printed surface that you can buy as, a, as an alternative. So we'll let this dry and then we'll move on. So now our, uh, our gravel has dried, our ballast, and I've just painted the rest of this section with some brown paint just to sort of take the white off it and uh, it's dried with a, a slight variation in color and uh, it's also dried with a, a bald patch there <laughs> that doesn't really matter because it's some, something that I'm going to show you shortly so what we're going to do now is add a little bit more color to this because uh, although it looks quite good we can uh, do a few things with some acrylic paint just to make it look a little bit more realistic so before we treat our sample road, I thought I'd just show you this, and this is a very small section of a piece of road on one of my layouts. And it's made to look deliberately worn. Roads do not wear evenly. You have parts where there are heavy traffic flow. You have parts where there have been road works and repairs. And uh, it's just the way things are. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not particularly keen on the printed roads that you can buy. And this road is still in build. There's a number of things to finish. But even the road markings have a level of wear about them. Because, well, in real life, that's how they are. So on our sample piece of road, I'm going to show you a couple of variations that you can apply to give your roads some more realistic so now with some heavily watered down acrylic black paint 
we've applied a few different variations to road wear on our example. The first one shows a black road rather than the grey that we started out with, which is the natural look of our ballast. And of course with the loose chipping type roads you do get that grey appearance. But if you want to vary it you can use some of this diluted black paint and once that's dry that will colour it permanently and it will look quite good. Another type of variation represents wear in the road from tyres of vehicles that move over it. And in this example I've just got a little N-gauge bus on our piece of road and we'll just take that away now and you can see that the wear areas the lighter grey coincide with where the tyres would move on that particular piece of road so we'll just compare that now with our black piece of road at the very top of our example and finally now we've just put some random brush strokes in with our diluted black paint so we'll move back and just have a look at the three different types of road that we've created on our sample piece here. And so lastly now we've applied some white line marking down the road. And uh, I tend to use ordinary silk emulsion paint for this. And the reason I use silk is that if you've ever looked at marking paint, road marking paint, it does tend to have a shine to it, a sheen to it. And I think it's a bit more realistic than a matte finish. And again, the road markings are not perfect because roads do not wear perfectly evenly. Now, one of the advantages of having an elevated piece of road, like our demonstration piece here, it has some elevation to it, is that we can introduce something that is very common to roads here in the UK, and that is roadworks. Uh, that might be the same the world over, but in the UK you have to have roadworks. It's the law. So now on our Celotex, we've, or polystyrene in this case, we've introduced some a hole in the road. But of course at the moment the hole is white and it wouldn't be, so we just put some uh, colouring into that. And again, I should just use a, a range of... Uh, dirty colours, sort of browns and, and black and dark yellow and grey, just to make it look like a, a real hole in the road would. So now with the aid of some more diluted acrylic paint, we've created a hole in the road that has some colour to it. But of course when you look down a hole in the road, it isn't just a hole, there are cables and pipes, so now we need to create those as well. So now this barbecue skewer, this wooden skewer, is about to become part of our composition. So what we've done now is taken our wooden skewer and we've painted a yellow section, then a gap, and then a brown section. And that's because I want yellow and a brown pipe in my roadworks. Why not? It's my layout. Now, because this is only a thin wooden skewer, I'm able to use some side cutters and I'll just trim off these two parts. And we end up with this. So now we need to insert these two poles into our piece of road. So what we're looking to do is to have the two poles that represent our two pieces of pipe in the hole but of course not on the surface, somewhere down under there. And this is one of the advantages of creating an elevated piece of road, because the poles are going to go in at a level that allows them to become visible as they appear through our hole that represents our piece of roadwork. So we've now got our two pipes in our hole in the road. Lastly, if you want to add even more realism, we'll take some of our cuttings here that were used when we made the, the hole, paint them grey and glue them on to the side of the roadworks to represent the rubble 
that was created when the hole was excavated in the first place. So we'll do that now. And finally there you have it. Roadworks. In a road that looks quite realistic. Variation in the road texture and colour. A little bit of contouring as well. And of course if you use this, uh, this technique that I've shown you, it pays to build the, sec the road in sections because for something like this of course you're going to have the next piece of road carrying on the way here and the reason for that is that at the end of the road here of course you can see the, uh, the wooden skewers where they enter the roadwork area here. But of course all these things are entirely up to you. It's your diorama create what you feel you would like but I think these types of uh, techniques that I've shown you are far superior to the printed roads that you can buy and uh, hopefully you'll have a go yourselves and of course lastly you might even uh, set up some temporary traffic lights and some barriers around the roadworks. I wouldn't go so far as to putting uh, people uh, workmen on the roadworks because um, well that just doesn't happen does it they they put the roadworks up dig the hole put the traffic lights up and then they go away and you never see them again uh, but there we are I hope you've enjoyed this we we'll look forward to seeing you again soon please take care and stay safe in these still difficult times bye for now